I'm honored to keynote this Information Architecture Summit, and sorry I can't be with you in person. My title is New Fields and Field Effects. Starting a new field is fun. I've done it a couple of times, but you never know how it will turn out. Now, I'm told that information architecture is not a new field. It's new to me, uh, under that name anyway. I never heard of information architecture before I was invited to speak, so undoubtedly information architecture under that name is new or non-existent to millions of others. So I'll call it a new field, meaning that it is aspirational, struggling, and not established in public consciousness. A new field, a claimant new field, a putative new field, must compete with hundreds of other fields for respect, attention, grants, patronage, customers, office space, students, acolytes, and inheritors. Whether anybody can get a job by claiming competence in a field that is not well known is a tricky question, involving appearances, street smarts, and luck. So, what is a field? A school of thought in some zone of concern, a way of operating and thinking, professionals wanting respect in business under a specific label and claiming special understandings, special abilities. So the political issue facing the new field and its adherents is how to establish the name and create a public image of competence, staking out an area that seems to make sense to people. But if it makes too much sense, then most people won't think the field is necessary. So there needs to be a little uh, invasive hauteur and hocus-pocus, if not hokum. So publicizing and celebrating the new field in name and its claims are politically central. We could compare it to a new religion, but let's not go there. Whether a name for a field catches on or not is very political, and also very much a question of what clicks in the public mind. There have probably been hundreds of attempts to start and publicize new fields that did or usually did not catch on, partly because of the rivalries of fields that were already there. If they have to make room adjusting their borders topologically, it means smaller territory of subject and fewer students and less customers. Here are some favorites of mine that didn't catch on. Mathetics, supposedly the science of learning, but the Journal of Mathetics only printed two issues. That shows the problem. Euthenics, anecdote. Fifty years ago, when I was teaching sociology at Vassar College, my office was in a building called, I kid you not, the Mini Cumnock Blodgett Hall of Euthenics. The building name has rung in my ears down the decades. Benefactories Blodgett thought of euthenics as being the science of behaving right, which he expected to be complementary to eugenics, which was going to be in those days the science of breeding right. Well, I'm sure the building still stands, I don't know about the plaque, but few of us order our lives by either eugenics or euthenics. Nexialism, the study of connections. I typed up a business card as a teenager saying I was a Nexialist. It was for myself, I think I filed it somewhere, <clears throat> and I know some Nexialists, but they don't use the word. Synectics, also the study of connections, or maybe the science of creativity. Great name, no contracts. Intellectronics, I love that one. Could be anything, but it doesn't get around much anymore. Informatics, a much better term than information technology or IT, used in France, but not in English-speaking countries. Anecdote, I wrote to Inf Informatics Inc. Uh, in 1963, I think it was, and asked if I could use the term informatics generically. They wrote back and said I couldn't. I didn't know trademark law, so I left it at that. Of course I could have used the term generically, and it might have become the name of the field today. Sigh. Here are some fields and labels that sort of caught on. Ergonomics, a technical sounding name for making things easy to use, which semi caught on. Human factors, a non-technical sounding name for making things easy to use, which semi caught on. Communication design, pretty broad. Anecdote, at one university where I worked, communication design was apparently a euphemism for training in advertising. I gave a talk on hypertext with the communication design department in 1973. I talked about the human future at interactive screens and documents that connected to each other. And one student complained fiercely, what has this got to do with calm design? Seemed to me everything, but I was unable to help him see it. Here are some fields that had to fight their way in. Computer science. Fought at first by uh, uh, mathematics departments and engineering departments. 
computer graphics, fought at first by computer science departments, and fought in the ACM by SIGIR, the Special Interest Group on Information Retrieval. HCI, Human Computer Interaction, which was fought in the ACM by SIGGRAPH, the computer, com the computer graphics special interest group, and which, of course, had fought its way in. And, oh yes, hypertext. Anecdote. For some reason, artificial intelligence has been the greatest natural em enemy of hypertext. Many artificial intelligence guys hated the idea. <clears throat> so hypertext versus AI was a cat and dog situation from the beginning, although it took me decades to recognize it. First example, I visited CIA headquarters in Langley in 1966 and found myself in a nest of AI guys. They hated when I talked about what I said about hypertext. Twenty-three years later, at an AI conference, I spoke about hypertext, and the next speaker was Doug Lennett, a famous AI guy. His first words were, hypertext is evil. This was a couple of years before the web. So, <clears throat> here now is information architecture. What does information architecture claim to be? What Wikipedia says. Information architecture is a specialized skill set that involves the categorization of information into a coherent structure, preferably one that the intended audience can understand quickly, if not inherently, and then easily retrieve the information for which they are searching. Hmm. What usability.gov says, information architecture focuses on organizing, structuring, and labeling contents in an effective and sustainable way. The goal is to help users find information and complete tasks. In other words, information architecture is an aspirational new field that wants to claim special understandings of information presentation and organization. And I'm hearing behind that new layouts for flights of documents and pages on the screen, with maybe some new tricks of subject breakdown. So your natural enemies in academia and industry are Information science, formerly library science, technical writers, web designers, HCI, schools of design. Good luck on those political issues. So what do you know that's special about information presentation? I've been here before. I've watched computer go, computerdom go round and round on presenting information for 50 years. We're always looking for good ways to get ideas across, but th are there really new principles of organization, presentation, and uh, dare I use the word teaching for computer screens? Are there special methodologies for reducing a subject to a system of presentations? And can they be specially manifested in some new system of web pages or other documents as document templates to be replicated across topics? Do you really know something special about this? Are there new packaging rules for thought? Let's consider the history of document packaging. Based on ancient DNA, especially the FOXP2 gene, human language has probably been on the planet for a million years, at least 50,000 generations. That still gives me a free zone. So all that time, there's been information. There's always been information architecture from the early sagas and stories. We find unknowable diagrams throughout the ancient world from New Guinea to the Hebrides in both directions. The caves of France and Spain are extremely magical. We don't know who the artists were, what languages they spoke, but they were packaging information for somebody. Then came representation of speech, alphabets, and or the representation of thought, as in Chinese writing. And that brought documents, stable packages of content that have always been architected. Many ancient documents had standard formats, uh, royal decrees, cuneiform records, Bibles, and holy books, some with marginal glosses and Hebrew texts like the Talmud with winding parallel structures. In modern times came more standard packages. The personal book was a format created by Aldous Manutius, card catalogs. Newspapers have had standard layout for a long time. Lead paragraph, additional details who, what, when, where, though they started off a lot looser. Editorials and magazine pieces have a kind of standardized lay layout, a hook and then a through line to some zinger. Academic articles have a standard layout, abstract exposition, evidence and argument, conclusion. TV shows have formats, of course. Diaries. Emails are a stabilized package, visually unchanged since my friend Larry Roberts created the first email writer in the early 70s. 
the from, to, and a subject line that trails and drifts into irrelevancy as long-tailed replies go back and forth. This is increasingly clumsy. And now web pages. They went from the simple early styles where text would flow as you made a page narrower. Now if you change the size of the text, you can't see both ends of the line because of the hard carriage returns that the designers think they are entitled to inflict. Faint gray sans serif text that's too small for us over 40s and you can't change the size of it. All framed by acres of white space with junk sliding over whatever you're trying to read. And this is called design because prettiness of some kind is favored over readability. Which brings us to user experience design. Now, I hear that information architecture is a branch of user experience design. It's high time! Isn't that nice? I'm feeling, finally hearing about user experience after campaigning for it all my life. I've been talking about user experience and designing for it for over 50 years. User experience is about effects that the user feels. Felt, ex felt effects, or excuse me, field effects. I've argued for vividness, clarity, and motivation, vital aspects of user experience. Anecdote. You're probably familiar with one of my designs. About 45 years ago, I came up with the idea of the back button. But in 1968, it was only obvious. Obvious, you say. I totally agree. But in 1968, it was totally obvious to only one person in the world. My colleagues at Brown University said, users will never understand that. But they implemented it anyway, and sure enough, it was understandable. Anecdote. Thirty years ago, I tried to sell them at data point about screen interaction and the importance of vividly, vividness, clarity, and motivation. I took my bosses at data point to a video game parlor to give them a sense of what user experience could mean in terms of vividness, clarity, and motivation. That was a little after Space Invaders, games like Pac-Man, Ms. Pac-Man, Asteroids, and Centipede pulled quarters out of people's pockets. They were vivid, clear, and motivating. But one of my bosses, who believed in the keyboard command line, dismissed the idea of vividness as operator entertainment. He did get it. He did not get it, and many people still don't. Information is a slippery concept. Some say knowledge, but knowledge means truth. Let's not go there. Most of what we call information is assertions made by authorities, companies, and people filling out forms. Information is both slippery and fluid. Being fluid, it can be poured into any vessel. You can put the same content, more or less, into bullet points, a documentary film, a poem, an opera, a ballet with some loss of detail, an app, or simply some piece of writing. Now, I'm a writing chauvinist. I believe that good writers, Kipling, Twain, Ludlam, journalists, novelists, screenwriters, know something about architecting information. When writers, authors, are information architects, each document is a mix of assertion and presentation. And it's about the connection of ideas, representable in so many ways. The complexity of the writing process is not well understood. No presentation structure is right or wrong, except that it does the job. Getting the ideas across, leaving the recipient in a positive frame of mind. The process of writing is one of abstracting and modeling the subject as related to the mind of the reader, spicing it with interest. But that isn't a stable or transposable packaging methodology. Let's talk about layouts and formats. I suspect that information architects think a lot about stabilized formats with corresponding parts. This is a fusion of clarification, standardization, aesthetics, and branding. I suspect a mix of motivations here. A, wanting to get meaning across, and B, wanting to create distinctive corporate branding and style are not necessarily contradictory, but go in two directions. I'm dubious about any universal standard layouts, styles of presentation come and go, but I'm guessing that information architecture is not about standardization. More about A, some people think they can create new universal elegant formats, and B, some people ready and eager to create house styles, which is an eager, a different agenda. Now, I am not a disinterested observer here. I have my own document agenda. I've managed to talk a long time today about documents without mentioning my own system of sanity. Just because it's too different. Incompatible with the web, off the map of conventional documents which imitate paper. .txt, .pdf, .html, they're all the same to me. My document world is about parallel pages with visible connections.
visible lines connecting content on one page to content on another. Every quotation connected to its source. Talmudic interconnection for the interactive screen. I hope to have that working one of these years, but it's long and difficult. Simple, but diverse in its requirements. Wish me luck. Okay, quote closing remarks, unquote. Note that schools have a standard format and methodology, and the one thing they achieve reliably is to make every subject uninteresting. Whereas the principles of writing, showing, and teaching are what they always have been. Generate interest and involvement with clarity and orientation. I sincerely hope that information architecture can make education better. It sounds like you think you can. Thank you.